just want to run us through uh, this book and tell us a little bit about it? Oh, this is what I studied hard for. Yeah. You know, because I was interested in painting and decorating because I've always liked to do that work. So I studied, I wanted my city in guild so that I could make money and things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I worked so hard, you know, all these are all different, I forget what you call them, all different. The different modules? That you yeah, have modules, yeah. Yeah. All different modules. Like, it, learnt, it shows you how to put up scaffolding and dismantle it and things to that effect, you know, to do with the decorating trade. Mm -hmm. Like if you was working outside as well as we inside. Interior and exterior. Yeah. Okay. Exterior. Yeah. So you did a lot of, uh, yeah. You know, they show you from the beginning, all different paints and surfaces, what paints to go on, which surface and which is the appropriate paint and things like that. So this is evidence of your hard work and your efforts yeah. to actually apply yourself yeah. To get a job and yeah. getting into the situation has basically meant that these certificates, even though you worked hard for them yeah. and you, sh you should be able to work, yeah. this condition is not yeah. allowing you to actually. Yeah. yeah. As my GP told me that I couldn't do that work anymore. He said it's not good for you because of that. And at this, yeah, at this specific stage, I kept coughing, vomiting, coughing, vomiting because he said I was allergic to the paint. That's what he was telling me. So he thought uh, initially it was the paint yeah. that you were allergic to? Yeah, but all the time it was my kidneys. You wow. see, that's why I kept coughing and vomiting and all those carry-ons, you know? Do you want to flick through some of yeah. these and just tell us about the different stuff that you've got? Uh, these are all to do like this. Let me see. There's all different modules. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, uh, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 Twenty-eight, twenty-nine. It's about thirty-five, roughly. 35, thirty-eight, say thirty-eight. Thirty-eight different modules that you modules. go through for that. And then after that, now. Yeah. You went on. I like ended up with level. Level one. Yeah. And then level two. Mhm. Mm That's what I went up to. So I got my level two certificate, one and two. Mhm. Mm that was for painting and decorating. Yeah. No. You were doing. You also said that you were doing some tiling and roofing, so yeah, you were this quite, is, yeah. yeah, that's a different thing. This is MVQ one and two. I got yeah. MVQ one and two. And you tiling and roofing. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. Roofing and tiling and cement work and craft. Okay. Now, I was learning to do the roofing, tiling, roofing, and. I passed on both assignments, as you can see here, passed on both, and this is the roof, like all different patterns they learn you, mm. you see, okay. like all different, like I was even thinking to work in Germany, oh, wow. because there you get good pay in Germany for roofers, yeah. you know, but this illness just became worse and worse because I wasn't cared for in the right way. You also said that you also did a bit of personal training, a bit of fitness, so you was quite an active man. Yeah. Before. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you want to show us some of those? So, yeah. yeah. And you did what a bit of fo fo yeah. football coaching as well. Football coaching, jun junior team management. Wow. Yeah. So to go from an active lifestyle yeah. to basically not being able to, to do run, anything. to do anything, yeah. the yeah. must have. Yeah. This is my level one certificate. Yeah, and this is my level two. Yeah. That's for the painting and decorating construction. Mm. You see? And in between, I was doing like 
you know, computers, I started to get into it gradually, you know? Yeah. Because I wasn't into computers really. But I tried, you know, to change my life by doing other things as well, you know? Yeah. Because I knew that like, it was new technology coming in. Mm. So I tried to do little bits and pieces. Yeah. So, so I learned, I learned spread sheets. spreadsheets and all down here. All different things, you know? Mm. But I didn't really take it too serious at the time because that wasn't, I, I like to work with my hands, you know? You were hands on, you were active physically. Active, active. physically, yeah. yeah. So I've done some spreadsheets on a computer course, database. Word processing. And word processing, you know? And then that's a reference. From Lang Training From Services. Lang training. Yeah, good reference. Yeah. So you were a hard working, active man and Exactly. This illness, well, it's kinda yeah. just led things to become a lot more difficult for you, not as active. Yeah. And I can yeah. only imagine how that makes you feel. Yeah, it makes me feel very like distressed, you know. You see? Because I was a skilled paint and decorating as you got here, you know? My registration details are here, you know. See? You know? And this is my registration card, you know? So I wasn't no cowboy who claims to be a decorator, you know? You were actually registered, yeah. yeah. You know? And these are little bits and pieces like, you know, first aid mm -hmm. at work, because I was working with kids. Yeah. You know, I had to know first aid and bits and pieces like that. You know? mm -hmm. And that's it, you know? I was doing some football training at the Leighton Orient football ground and things like that with kids. And you said you do some like scout work for them as well? Yeah, bits and pieces, you know. It's just a sad it. thing to hear that, yeah. to, to go from this and then to be a negligence yeah. on the part of the doctors and then further negligence to kind of just make you inactive. Yeah. So it's really made me feel really down in life, you know, really down, you know, and I've done a bit of English speaking, you know, things like that, you know, and health and awareness, health and safety awareness, you needed that, you know, like, if you're working, putting up scaffolding and things, mm -hmm. you need these sort of things and be able to communicate with people and things like that. Yeah. I know, like, you know, just common sense and all, you know, really. You learn things as you go along and, like, uh, you do things to benefit you for your future. And this is what happens to you, you know. And that's it, really. And I've done a bit of uh, promotion of health for food and hygiene. So the nutrition work there as Yeah, well. so if I wanted to do like kind of restaurant work and things like that, you know? Mm. You have the qualifications like that, to go yeah. and pursue that particular career. Yeah. And then I've done a bit of, well, at Suffolk College I was doing introducing to caring, you know? Caring for people, you know? Mm. And now I find myself in here, nobody's caring for me, you know? Mm. That was awarded to me. You know, I left myself a lot of options, you know, but the options what I've left myself with, they yeah, don't benefit me now, you know. Yeah. And this is a diabetes course what I went into and as soon as I found out I had diabetes, I was induced with it. Diabetes education on type two, you know. Because mm. I wanted to make progress, you know, like eating the right food and trying to help myself along, you know, even though I wasn't getting too much help from the NHS, I was trying to help myself, so I went on these courses, you know? Yeah. And that's that. And then I was weight lifting, training. These are my stars, I started, you get one star to begin with, then you get two stars, then you get your certificate if you want to work in the gym, uh, so you basically, you were a personal trainer? Yeah, I was working with the 
you know, the world's strongest man in England. Yeah. He's named Gary Taylor, so his signature's here. Wow. You know, he was a course instructor. Wow. And he learnt me a lot of things, you know. I could have went forward, working in the gym, uh, observate, observation, like watching people, make sure that they're in safety hands, you know, how to lift the weights and things like that. Because this is my certificate here. It allows you to do basic weight training and lifting techniques. And it's shown to be competent to train with free weights and machines with the minimum of supervision. You know? yeah. So I took this course as well, and then I got my free stuff. Wow. You know? Fully fledged. Yeah. yeah. So it shows your commitment, the fact that you would see something through to the end, yeah. you were active. Yeah, it came to the British Amateur um, Weightlifting Association. You know? So I could have gone further, you know, but damage occurred and, you know, I couldn't lift weights again, I couldn't do anything really, basically. Change your life completely. It knocked the stuffing out of me, yeah. You know, I didn't know where to go next, you know. And it's been miserable ever since. And that's my life, really, basically. You know? And I just feel everything's wasted, really. Because I had a choice a number of things I could have done, you know. Mm. You know but psychological is really messed up my head. What can I say? Seems like a waste, a waste of a life, you know, to me. There's many a times I've been depressed, you know, I feel like just ending it, taking a load of tablets, and just ending it, you know, because it's distressful, you know. I haven't got a life anymore, you know. When you have to go there, you, you're always that call, you know. Mm. Every two days I have to go there, spend four hours there, come home, knackered, because it takes the stuffing out of you, it's not natural what's happening to your body, you know, you start getting pains if they're taking too much fluid off of you, nothing's really precise, everything's guesswork, how much they're going to take off you today, how much they should take, it's all guesswork, you know. If you let them to, ju if you was to just sit there and don't make any qu qu inquiries and things like that, they would have a field day with you. If I like, if it, like me, because I'm active and I can talk to people, yeah, and find out what's going on next, because I've had bad experiences. If I was in that nature, they would just do anything they want with you, like a guinea pig. Uh, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that. But if you don't query it, yeah. they get away with all this. You see? There's people in there was blind, they can't see, they don't know what's happening to them. You know, thank God I've got my two eyes to see what's going on. You see? Yeah. So it could be worse, because at least I've got my eyes. They have been damaged my eyes completely because I can still see a little bit. Because the diabetes was eating it out. You know, at the back. Mm. The sugar and everything because I'm diabetic. So I've had to go in the diabetes course and learn things for myself. There was nothing that they, sh they taught you. Well, like. they tried to tell me, don't eat this, don't eat that. If you can't eat this for your diabetes, yeah, mm. they say you can eat this. But you can't eat that because you can't eat it for your kidneys because of the damage to your kidney, so, you know, backwards and forwards. So I went on a course myself to learn things, what I can eat from what I can't eat. Yeah. Because I couldn't wait for them any longer, you know. Because I've got two kids, you know. And, you know, it's not fair on them, you know. So I have to look out for them as well, you know. And, you know. Because I lost my father at an early age, yeah? I don't want it to happen to them, you know. Yeah. Because I know what it's like, you see. So I try to prevent these things happening. You know? and that's it really, you know. So that's that, uh, the question. This is just history, it's nice to look back on, to 
see what I achieve. But it will never be any use to me, I don't think. And at the rate the NHS is going, you know, because nothing seems to be going right for me at the moment. I'm sad really because I, I think all good things uh, came to nothing. It was nice when I was achieving them, I felt good inside, but now it don't mean nothing, does it? Just what I've achieved. It's not going to help me, it's not going to bring me money, because I can't do the work anymore. So I'm stuck on the dull now, which I shall remain. And that's it. What can I say? Yeah. Thanks. And another thing too, this book here now, yeah. I've trained all my life to become something in my life, you know. I've trained everything. Look. See, good reference from Langs, one of the best building sites you will ever hear of, Langs. You know? All my reference, everything, all gone to waste. Waste, 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 look. All waste. See the design roof I used to do? Mm. I meant to go to Germany to work. You know? But now I can't do that work again. I get depressed. All the training kids football, I can't do it no more. You know? I'm breathless. You know? It's killing me. It's killing me, pure killing me. You know? Look at my card. CSS. Killing me. You know? First aid work. All these things I can't do no more. You know? Weightlifting. You know? Can't it's do it. It's not even just those things that you can't do anymore. It's just basic day to day life. Day to day life. You know? Even what, girl, even what girl would want me like this? You tell me. What girl, if I went out there and I got myself a girlfriend, yeah? This is why I haven't got myself a girlfriend, yeah? Because I don't think it would be fair on the girl. It wouldn't be fair whatsoever to put her through my temperament every day. Yeah? Because I have mood swings. You can imagine. Mm. Yeah? From a healthy man what used to go gym every day. Frustrated. Can't go gym no more. Can't do the things what I want to do. So why should I get a girlfriend and put her through these things? It wouldn't be fair on her, you know? There's a lot of girls what I can meet out there, yeah, and linger with and bring in here. But would it be fair? It wouldn't be fair, you know? If I couldn't have a sexual relationship with a girl, yeah, what is she doing with me? What use have I got? What can I give her? Why should she put up with me? It's not fair. I've had a girlfriend before where well, I've been like this. And it's not nice when the girlfriend wants sexual intercourse and you can't do nothing for her because you ain't got an interest in the world. You don't have an interest. You're ill. You're worried about your health, whether you're going to wake up the next day. You don't know what can happen to you. So why should I have a girlfriend and put her through this? You see? It's not worth it. It's not fair on her, is it? It's like you're taking somebody else's life, yeah? And putting it with your life, yeah? and you're not able to make nothing for her or do anything, it's not worth it. You know? Because I wouldn't personally like a girl to get involved with a girl, yeah, and, I, and she's got all these problems. Like, there's all different problems out there. You might have to carry her in a wheelchair, shopping and all that. There's all different problems, health issues. Now, I wouldn't like to be able to do that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to do that, put it that way. So what I wouldn't want for myself, I wouldn't want for other people. I wouldn't want a girlfriend to come here now and listen to all my problems and I'm driving her mad and like she's depressed because of my health. I've had it all before. You see what I mean? It's damage. I'm damaged goods. You know? And these people what damage me, yeah? They haven't tried to rectify it by saying... Let's give this guy some private treatment, yeah? Let's make him priority. Because when this man attended to us, yeah? He only had a leak in one of his kidneys. A very minute leak. Yeah? Which five meals worth of steroids would have cured that and he would have been alright today. 
Like somebody told me today that they had the same as me, but they caught it in the beginning and five meals cured it. They've only got to take two more days worth of steroids. Story, yeah. yeah. But because my one was sent home, I'm all right. Two years down the line, I wasn't all right. So I'm damaged, you know? And not even to say, right, let's look out for this guy. You know, we've made an error on him, fair enough. Let's look out for him. Let's try to get him a kidney, a good one. And a good surgeon, what can do the job right. Not that he has to come back in two years time and messing about with misshaped bits and pieces. Let's try and get one for him that he can live maybe another 10 years or so. That's all I'm asking. They gave me damage. So if they can give me a kidney what can last 10 years or 8 to 10 years, it's not too bad. But I don't want them offering me all these kidneys here where you can get a cyst on the brain and all side effects and they just bump you up with tablets. I'm taking enough tablets as it is, so I don't want that, mm. you know? I don't want to have to put myself through tablets and walking around like out there in cuckoo land. I'm already walking out there. I nearly got run down by the tablets, the side effects what I've been taking. Some of them send you like do dally some of the tablets. Because can you imagine? You take a whole load of tablets here, they're all counteracting each other. So it's a going around in your head, in your body, all over you, yeah? Some of them make your legs stiff. Some of them make you tingle. Some of them make you lose your memory. They're all there the side effects in the tablets. You know, in the bag there, mm. you know, so all this, like, you know, it's all kind of getting me down, you know, because I don't see any progress. I see other people in there, they're all right, happy, joking and all that, because their situation is different from mine, because their situation probably was genuine, like, they had mash-up kidneys and whatever, so they've accepted it over the years, yeah? But my one... It was caused by someone else. Yeah. So when I'm there now, I've got nothing to look forward to. They're running about, like, can't wait for their kidney, yeah? Because they haven't had the experience what I've had. Do you know? The letdowns and things like that. So everything they offer me, yeah, it's kind of like damaged goods or let down here, there. Like... The last kidney they offered me. They gave it to some chap before me. He'd been waiting 24 hours for the kidney for it to come from St. George's to Whitechapel. 24 hours, he said that he never ate, he never drank anything. And then all of a sudden now, they come with a kidney. Uh, he says, by the time he, they put the gas on him in the theatre, he said he had a panic attack. He said previously they had told him that if he took the kidney, yeah, if he's taking it, he's at his own risk, he's taking it, he can get a cyst on the brain. That's, that's so he said that when he went down there, when he put, they put the gas on him, he realised what he was doing. He come to his senses, so he didn't want it. That was 12 midnight. So that's 24 hours he'd been waiting. And at 12 midnight, they wanted to work on him. So because that failed with him now, because he had a panic attack, they send the police to my house. Three o'clock in the morning, they was calling me. You know? Like, I'm second best. And I thought to myself, what are you calling? Even he said to me, he says, why did they call me before you? Yeah, and one of the nurses turned around and said, oh, maybe it was a better match for you than me. So I thought to myself, well, if it's a better match for him, let it stay with him. Were you putting it on to me for the leftovers? And where had it been for the last three hours? Which they never used it on him. What, did they put it back on the ice? Or did they leave it laying there thinking we'll rush this one in now because it's already defrosted, we'll give it to him. Like I'm second best, like a dog, you know? Mm. And it shouldn't be like that, you know? I shouldn't have to worry about, oh, what am I getting? It should be all fair and square. You know what I mean? You're on the list. They already said that I had kidney already, so I'm not surprised that they're giving me some 
budge up thing like to just say oh we gave him something you know but i don't want something that i have to come back the following year like some other people in there you know if you gotta give me something and i'm going under the knife here i want something decent you know because i'm shit scared you know i've never had operation before i've never been in there before i don't know about them things but i do know if they've got to cut me off and put me to sleep here yeah? yeah give me something worthwhile decent you know, that I can say oh, I've got 10 years out of it or five years, you know. But I'm fed up of seeing people backwards and forwards in there after one year, two years, and their bowels out after having infection and things like that. They've had to have it out for maybe one month, six weeks. It's like my girlfriend, she went there to check her kidney out. Yeah? Right. She said your, she wanted your to... Was your girlfriend yeah, she, time, yeah. yeah, she wanted to give it to me, the kidney. And I told her, I said, listen... I'm frightened of the whole situation. I'm not ready for a kidney. Mentally, I'm not ready because I haven't got trust in these people. Let me wait a little bit more, see what's occurring and get a little bit more life. Anyway, she went ahead, yeah, because I was down here this weekend. She was up in Brighton and she went ahead at her own risk. And she'd been living like that for 55 years, whatever, yeah nothing was wrong with her kidneys they said to her that uh, they could put a stent in it because one of the vessels the blood ain't going through nicely so she agreed to them all of a sudden now they put the stent in two weeks later she got infection she had to have her kidney out with oh. part of her liver she was in brighton for nearly six weeks general hospital just because she went to get her kidney to help me to check, get it checked out. So when all these things happen before me, yeah, what faith can I have in this? What faith can I have? You know? It's almost it's, like they've made you hopeless. Yeah. I don't have faith in them. You know? I don't have faith whatsoever. Because I think that, you know, they could have done better for me. They could have. You know, they could have sent me to a specialist. After they knew the damage occurred, they should have said, well, this man's been suffering like that for nearly two years, leaking kidney. Let's try and do something for this man. He deserves it. But no, nothing, nothing. You know, just offering me bits and pieces here what people don't want. You know, they should have, they should say to themselves, right, we owe this man a kidney, we made an error, we hold our hands up, because errors do occur. Yeah. So we hold our hands up, we owe him a kidney, let's try and get him a kidney for his body. This man was a healthy man before all this occurred. He was in the gym, he kept himself good, let's try to get him a good kidney, so that he, get him out of the way. We cause the problem, we admit liability. Like, it's nothing like that. They're not doing nothing like that. Do you know? They don't care. I'm just another number to them. They just click their fingers, hey, we'll have him in. Yeah, let's have this one in now. Give the kidney to him. Even if it's no good, give it to him. Hope for the best. Give him the tablet, side effect tablets. You know, like what they give you, like when they give you a kidney. Yeah. They just give you the effects like the side effects before it only used to be family what can give you kidney but now they've done the experiment they said that you can have anybody's kidney yeah with the what they, they call give it you the right antibiotics and yeah, the right yeah, type yeah. of um, medicine like that, that allows yeah. you to fight off yeah to stops your body yeah. from actually fighting off yeah so that's the organ yeah that's that and this is what i'm worried about really you know because like uh, since i've had that authority to do that they just give you any kidney, like the tramp. Well, well, I shouldn't call him a tramp, really. He was the homeless. Whole, the homeless guy that died. They yeah. gave his kidneys to one one set of people and, and another, another set, set of people. And both prior, died. Both of them died prior to that. Several hospitals in the United Kingdom yeah. already rejected the kidneys, saying that they weren't fit exactly. to be placed on somebody else. However, exactly. these two hospitals, I believe, one yeah. was in London, the other one was in Wales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took the kidneys. Yeah. They gave them to um, the two patients in question. Yeah. 
One died, I think it was 24 hours later, the other one died yeah. a month later. Yeah. They found so out all that this the kidneys is, yeah. had worms. So all yeah. this is happening, yeah, it was frightening me, you know. I've got no faith in this system whatsoever, you know. I've got no faith because, like, the way the doctors talk to you, they're asking you questions, like, right? they prescribe you tablets, yeah. And they've got the book in front of them. And they're asking you, how much of this are you taking then? How much of this are you taking? They should have that information already. They already know that, how much you're taking, because they prescribe it to you, but they're just too lazy to even look in the book to find that. So they're asking you. That's how it is. And I'm fed up with it now. I don't know what to think anymore, you know? You know? A whole life, I feel that like I've wasted my life, you know? I've wasted.